going on everyone back with another episode of stuff and things typically i would be saying good morning right now but it's actually kind of late at night it's about nine o'clock and i had a very busy very productive day today i woke up this morning in las vegas nevada and i drove about four and a half to five hours down into the phoenix scottsdale area but more specifically peoria arizona now my timing on this trip down to arizona was kind of funny because i happened to be down here when it is super hot like probably one of the hottest days of the year so far it got up to 117 degrees today so why is that kind of funny or ironic well it's because i was going down there to meet up with nomadic cooling this is a really cool company who reached out to me a while ago but at the time i just didn't have the time and resources to do anything with them i happened to be close enough i was within driving distance so i went down there for an install day can you put two and two together and tell me what Nomadic Cooling installs? Well, I'll tell you this, it's not complete complete yet. There's actually kind of a hole in the ceiling. It looks more gnarly right now than it actually is. There's a reason that's off of there right now. So let's roll some footage from the shop today. All right, so this is Elliot doing the install for us today. He's gonna give us a rundown of the 3000 that's going in its place. Yeah, so what we got here is the Nomadic Cooling 3000 unit. It's gonna be identical to the Nomadic Cooling 2000 unit with the exception of the compressor. And this is our newest version of the 3000. As a small company, we've been slowly refining the product as we get feedback from the customers as well as the builders. So this new version has our 3000 compressor. Um, it's going to be able to pull on full blast mode up to 120 amps. Uh, on eco mode, it typically pulls between 50 and 65 amps. Uh, we recommend all of our units are ran on eco mode except for the hottest of situations. It's got six different fan speeds. Uh, we have our brand new uh, rear fan right here. The old one used to stick up about two inches higher, so we really looked at sourcing a better exhaust fan uh, to again shave more height off of our unit. We're one of the most low, pro uh, low profile units on the market right now. We also got feedback about the drain ports at the front of the unit not working out the best. So we went ahead and added this additional drain port and started funneling the water out the sides uh, to prevent any future leaking. And this is now a new evaporative tray. If for any reason this doesn't fit with your design as far as space goes, we made it lower so that it should fit under any standard roof rack. But if for any reason the evaporation tray doesn't work, feel free to go ahead and chop it off. The base of the unit technically ends right here and the water can still flow out. Okay. So if for any reason we're a really DIY company around here, go ahead and chop it off. There'd be no issue with that at all. So we're really excited to put this on for him. Should give him plenty of cooling capacity, longer run time while he's driving on the road. Uh, like I said, pulls up to 120 amps or on eco mode about 50 to 65. Difference in temperature between the two, probably about five to 10 degrees difference between the eco and the, uh, the full blast cooling mode, so. So that was a quick little look at the install of this Nomadic Cooling 3000 on top of the van now. I'll go into a little bit more detail a little bit later once this thing is actually complete and tidied up. I'll talk about why I did it and then I will have time to test it. So I will give you guys like a full review on that. I've already been getting a lot of questions on Instagram and I'm excited to test it out and share it with you guys. Now the reason that this is all off like this right now is because I'm waiting on a plate to install, one that's specific for the Revel. The unit is installed super firmly and it actually does work. The only thing is I don't have all the electrical put into a panel and I don't have the little knobs to sort of direct the airflow. That being said though, maybe if we can shine some light up in here. 
On the right there is the actual blower. That is where the cool air will be coming from. And on the left side there, that is sort of the intake or the return. I'm basically going to put a barrier in between here to keep those things separate, tidy all of this stuff up once I get the actual plate for this unit. And then we'll be rocking with a slimline, hopefully super power efficient, quiet air conditioner. Now I'm actually gonna turn this thing on real quick so you guys can maybe hear how it sounds. It is definitely much, much quieter than the previous unit, but since I don't have the plate and this thing like fully installed, that plate's actually gonna cut down on even more noise in the future, so this thing is going to be pretty much silent compared to my old unit. It does come with this little remote right here, so if I simply tap on, just like that. It's on, just felt the compressor kick on, and this air is already coming out relatively cool. I'm actually gonna be testing this thing out right now, leaving it on overnight. I'm currently at 90.1, so we'll just call it 90% on my 630 amp hour battery. With this remote, I can control the fan speed. We got one, or the low mode, two, three, Four? Is there another one? Five? <laughs> that thing is moving air. There's even another one at six. All right, six levels. I'm gonna keep this on three for the night and we'll set the temperature to, let's do about 72. It was super, super hot today, but as I moved up to the place that I'm at right now, it cooled down quite a bit. I believe it's still about 85 degrees outside. And speaking of that, where am I at? I'm currently in a tiny little town just outside of Strawberry, Arizona called Pine, Arizona. I had some really good dinner at this tiny little like shed shack bar thing tonight, wood-fired pizza, it was delicious. And tomorrow, I'm meeting up with someone who I just met today and we're going on a hike that is probably gonna be dangerous, but the end point on this hike. I saw pictures of it. I've been looking at it most of the day today and I'm really looking forward to it. Because it's so hot here, I need to go to sleep now and wake up super early so we can get to the trailhead before it is blazing hot in the morning. So with that being said, I will talk to you guys tomorrow. And just like that, it is morning. So good morning, everyone. It's about five o'clock AM, a little bit past five. And the AC last night was amazing. I started running it at about 9 p.m. It was roughly 85 degrees outside. Luckily, the temp out here did drop down just a little bit. So that new AC unit really didn't have to work too hard. We started with 90% battery and we are now at Still, 63.5. Since it did cool off out here, it obviously didn't have to work as hard conserving power, and it's 12 volt too, so overall it's going to conserve power compared to that old unit. This is what the roof is looking like now. This thing is a little bit wider, but much, much more low profile. My max tracks and solar panel are now even sitting higher than the AC. Now this is where I spent the night at last night, again in Pine, Arizona. I'm gonna head to the next town over, Strawberry. I mentioned just a minute ago that this hike was going to be kind of dangerous, but I think we may have lucked out with the weather. The reason I'm up so early is because I wanted to start this hike before the sun came up fully. And I think we are right on track at this point. Now let's head to the trail and start today's adventure. All right guys, we made it to the trailhead. The, what the hell is this place called? Fossil Springs. Fossil Springs, the Bob Bear Trailhead. This right here is Jay, who I met yesterday. How's it going, dude? Good. You're here super early. He came from where I did the AC install. What time do you leave, like one, two? This 30? morning around two, yeah. Two o'clock in the morning to come all the way up here. I got a head start, of course, last night, but he came by to say hi because he knew I was at the shop installing the AC, and then he also brought up this hike that you and your fiance did not too long ago? Yeah, a little over a month ago. So we're gonna go check this hike out. There's a bunch of signs that say how dangerous this is. 
typically because of the heat. We got 1,500 feet in elevation, roughly eight miles, probably gonna be a little bit longer. Do have a bunch of water loaded out in here. He brought snacks, thanks for that, dude. Yes, sir. Got some hydration packets, and I'm gonna switch over to my mini camera because I'm not carrying this big guy eight miles today. This is why I spoke on it being dangerous from the sheriff's office. 200 people have to be rescued here each year. Wonder how many people haven't. Oh, four. Four fatalities. Hopefully not us. That ain't gonna be us. <laughs> Another sign to tell us that we're gonna die. Yo, how many times are they gonna tell us that we're gonna die here? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the signage is insane. Not too shabby. 20 minutes in, one mile in. How you doing, Jay? Good, man, good. We're doing a lot of down climbing right now. <laughs> uh, two miles in, we've been out for another 20 minutes. So 40 minutes in, we'll probably be at the Toilet Bowl, which is the name of the place that we're going in maybe 45 minutes. Three miles in, about another 20 minutes has gone by and we're flying down here. It's gotten a little bit steeper as we're going in. So the hike out probably won't be great. Nope. It's gonna be hot. Should have about one more mile, maybe a little bit longer than a mile and we will be at the destination. Yep, John's gonna have to carry me out. <laughs> I don't know about that, I can barely carry <laughs> myself. <laughs> How much to go jump in that? How much for you to drink that? <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll definitely die down here. <laughs> we can hear the water, so we're definitely close. It's getting colder too, actually. Yeah. Feels good. So we made it to our destination here along the Fossil Creek. It may not look like much right now, but we made it here before the sun has. So wait till that goes up a little bit higher. I think you guys are gonna like this place. <laughs> stuck on the tree. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, dude, this is sick. <laughs> it's already super blue. Yeah. How was that for a 6 a.m. adventure? It's pretty good. Pretty good. You're not looking forward to the way up though. No, <laughs> it's not gonna be good. So those were the falls here at Fossil Creek. This is probably one of the cooler places I've been to in Arizona. 
I used to live in Scottsdale for a little while. I would fly in and out while working for IT, but I never got the chance to get out and explore. I just assumed this entire state was a million degrees. Everything's brown and dead. I don't think much is brown and dead here. It's all pretty nice. So now we have four, a little over four miles out of here and a lot of uphill. I guess I will check back with you guys every mile and update you on our death. All right, we're at five miles now in total. This is the part where the trail is probably gonna suck. It's getting hotter. There's no more shade out here, but we're gonna keep on keeping on, you know? <laughs> right at six miles, dying a little bit. We're just hopping from shade spot to shade spot and tackling hills like that right there. That was a 31 minute mile with our brakes. Two hours and 23 minutes in total, top to bottom, not including swimming around there. Gotta call that a Uber helicopter. Yeah, we need one of those. Mile number seven. One more full one to go. How are you on the death scale? <laughs> so that's like a seven on the death scale? 7.5. 7.5 out of 10. We got it. We got this. Mile eight. Home stretch. That last bit was a little brutal, and it's hot. Probably like 90s hot. Good thing we did it early, because we would be cooking right now. We'll talk to you guys back at the van. All right guys, we made it back to our vehicles. Just had a burger, a celebratory burger at this place. You guys should follow Jay's Instagram? What do I want to call it? You can follow your Instagram. <laughs> they should follow your way of reaching out to me though. I was just posting on Instagram where I was at and he was like, yo, I know where that's at. I'm going to come find you. I was like, cool. I'll be here all day. He showed up. Now we hung out all day. Hopefully we can do it again sometime too, man. We found out on the way out of that hike that there's actually a wildfire really close to us. I don't know if we can see it from our current location, but there were a bunch of rangers there taking down our information so they could like count us as alive as we came out. So that's kind of interesting. I don't even know what to say anymore. I'm delirious from the hike. So. <laughs> Good to meet you again, man. You too. Thank you guys for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.